Hello and welcome to week number two of Engineering Mastery Academy's training on 5S. I'm Brian Wood, your host. As you can see this week, I'm not going to make you try to read my bad writing on the whiteboard. Uh, instead, as you can see here, I've got my little summary. Uh, for, so on the first week, I talked about sort, the first S of the 5S's. And that's about getting rid of the things you don't need off the manufacturing floor. Or categorizing and moving things you don't need very often. The second S is that most important S in my opinion is definitely the most fun in my opinion. And that is set in order. Now set in order cannot be done justice in five minutes. Set in order uh, can't be just done justice in an hour unless you're actually doing it. Uh, but since I can't actually do it here, the best I can do is try to give you an overview. So as with any activity, you want to start the activity by measuring what your current state is meaning uh, where are parts currently, what does the floor layout look like, uh, what, what are the build times, etc. And you do this uh, through several tools. I'm going to share one of them with you right now. Now, for example, uh, let's say you have a manufacturing floor and you have an operator who's working at a desk here. And maybe there is a hole punch over here. Let's say you, you're following the operator around trying to measure your current state and you see that he works here for 30 minutes. And then he walks over here and he's over here for one minute doing a little hole punch. Then he's walking back over here. Uh, then let's say after a little while he needs to bend a piece of metal. Uh, so maybe there's a bending tool over here. So then he'll come out and he'll, he'll come over here to the bending tool and maybe he'll be one minute over here. Then be back here and he'll be another 20 minutes over here. This is a very simplified example of what's called a spaghetti diagram, where you follow the operator around, you measure distances, you measure the time in each place. And the best way to measure distances is with something like this, a little measurement wheel. Uh, this is compact, extends out. Basically, you, you turn it on, you roll it around, along the ground, and it measures the distance that you're walking. You follow the operator around and measure all those distances. Uh, you have a stop. You, everybody's got a cell phone these days. On your cell phone, you'll have a stopwatch, and you'll just measure the time in each place. In the end, you'll have a full picture of how long it took the operator uh, and uh, where they moved. You also, of course, want to capture everything with photo. Photo. You can't beat photos to show what things looked like before you get started. So with that information, you have your build time, you have the size of the floor, and how much space it took, and uh, all the travel distances and all the waste of uh, people walking around. You capture all these things. Don't forget to also uh, make notes while you're watching. If they're spending five minutes looking for a tool or they have to go over here to talk to somebody else to get a tool, record all of that. Don't say, oh, well, that's not how they normally do it, so I don't record it. You want to record all those wastes. So in the end, you can say, okay, we got more tools, we moved things around, and this is all the waste that we eliminated by doing it. You always want to be able to show ROI, return on investment, and this, is, this step right here is where you can show your biggest return on investment usually. So you, have your, so you have this, and let's say you organize the floor, you decide that, well, I've got other workstations over here, and this is, this is the best central location. I can't move these workstations for whatever reason. So I'm going to keep these in central locations. Then you'd want to go around with, I don't have an example here, but you want to go with some floor tape and mark out where you decide everything should be. Remember, the second S set in order is all about a place for everything and everything in its place. Once you decide where that place is, you want to mark out where those places are. Now, uh, let's, this is for the floor. This is one level. Now, that we go, if we go to the next level, I'm going to leave that up there. Um, if we look at a workstation, let's say we have the desk, we have the operator, and let's say they have a soldering iron over here. And maybe they have a spool of solder over here. And they have all their cleaning stuff over here, so maybe they have some IPA in a bottle, maybe some water. Uh, and let's say they have some tools. They have, some, you know, they keep some wrenches over here, and they keep some wrenches over here. 
maybe they keep things organized, but maybe they're not organized in an optimal way. For example, if one of these cleaning containers is only used with solder, then we should be moving that over there probably. Uh, there's tools. Rather than having tools in different places, you want to try to keep all tools in the same place or in the same area. When organizing tools, a couple tips. If you have a station where you have multiple different assemblies being built on that station, and all the tools being used overlap a lot, you know, maybe you can come up with a number, I'm just going to throw out, say, 30% overlap of the tools are the same, then you probably want to have a single place where all, with all the tools organized by the tool type in a way that everything is nice and visible. I'll go into some options for that in a moment. If you have a situation where you have different products being built and they use completely different tools, then you'll probably want to organize your tools by product and have one place for one product and another place for another product. Now, how do you want to organize your tools? It depends on the type of tools. Where I'm working right now, we work under microscopes. So something like a big whiteboard, I'm sorry, a big pegboard, like you might have seen, uh, where tools hanging off it, doesn't really work when your tools are only this big and some tools are only that big, right? So you have to look at what your tools are to determine what is the best way to organize them. For most, uh, for larger scale manufacturing, I should say for larger frame manufacturing, larger products, what I prefer is a whiteboard, I mean a tool board. Uh, there are different types of tool boards, different considerations. I'm going to try to give you as much broad information as I can to try to give some something to everybody. Uh, if you want to uh, get some more specifics from me, I'll by all means hit, hit me up. Now what is a pegboard? In case you haven't seen one, a pegboard would, would look something like this. It's a big board with a bunch of holes in it, a pattern, just a pattern of holes across, and you put into it, <clears throat> into those holes, you would poke things like this. This is a, a, an example of a standard tool holder. This might be used for something like screwdrivers, where you can drop the screwdrivers in here. Uh, and you put this up there, and then all your screwdrivers would be, would be uh, organized. They're putting a pro together a proper pegboard in, a, in itself is a full training. And sh there should be tons of questions. There's so many options. Uh, you there's something called a shadow board. You can look that up online. I personally don't like shadow boards. There's different ways to label tools, different ways to label the whiteboard and the pegboards. So uh, with all that, just know that for larger tools like screwdrivers and wrenches, something like a pegboard would be really good. Now you also have things such as equipment. I'm not sure equipment, but materials. You have materials that maybe come in a work order. Maybe they come in a box or a bin or on a cart and they come to the station. And you have other material that would be considered free issue maybe, meaning uh, anybody can just go in there. It's not really counted towards inventory. Or maybe it's vendor managed inventory where you have a, a wall of screws and a vendor comes in and refills the screws as needed. One thing I've seen so often is that when you have um, vendor managed, uh, VMI, vendor managed inventory, or you have free issue parts, so often people don't bother to give them part numbers. It's not so clear why in 5S it's important to give everything in part numbers, but when you go to work instructions, you want everything to have a part number for clarity. So one thing I would encourage you to do, even if you do nothing else in 5S, uh, as part of organizing, assign part numbers to everything that is consumed in a product. Doesn't mean you have to give part numbers to all the tools, but anything that's going to ship in that product, if you want to have uh, sustainable consistency, assign part numbers. If you want a template for assigning part numbers for screws and washers, etc., for hardware, I can provide you that, something I created. Um, other than that, uh, you want to look at how you're going to how are you going to organize those parts. Currently, maybe you have all the parts over. Okay, this is vendor managed inventory. Operators walk over there and get the parts. You want to consider having something on station. For example, I'm sure most of you have probably seen bin boxes, right? These bin boxes are are hooked so they can go on pegboards. Uh, you can have also you might just have ones that sit on the the counter, but you want to take a portion of that. Uh, vendor managed inventory and put it in smaller containers on station so the operator doesn't have to go back and forth. And you know maybe once a week, once a month, whenever they need to, they'll then they'll go and refill from the uh, 
the uh, general inventory. So that's about all I have time for today. Um, so again, measure your current state. Uh, then you want to organize the manufacturing floor. Then you want to organize the individual stations. Uh, and again, the details of doing all this is far more than I can do in five minutes, but it gives you it gives you a starting point. And even if you don't have any more direction, you can at least give some thought about from a big eddy diagram. Hey, how can I less than travel time from a station diagram? Hey, how can I make things more easily visible that, you know, where the tools are and whether or not they have the tools they need each day? So that's, I'm going to leave it right here. I welcome all your questions as always. I see that there's uh, approximately 10 to 15 of you watching each week. So I hope to get more feedback from each of you. And I will be reaching out soon uh, to everybody just to find out how these are going, what I should be improving, etc. So until next time, have a great week. This is Brian signing off, and be well.